Well, so I'm going to talk about a paper that's coming out in artificial intelligence uh, next year in a special issue in policy modeling. And this paper is basically uh, where, let me just talk about governance networks. We are trying to develop agent-based models to uh, capture the decision making that goes in at different levels of governance between, for example, federal government versus state government or regional governments versus local towns. How their decision making <coughs> uh, creates different outcomes in terms of efficiency or equity outcomes. Uh, as well as what kind of uncertainty management could be done uh, to uh, leverage the institutional dynamics. Uh, the model, this is, these are the observed patterns, for example, for the roadway transportation projects. Uh, that is an outcome of the existing rule structure in the state of Vermont across 10 different uh, regional planning commissions. And uh, you can see that these are very chaotic patterns, uh, but they are driven by an underlying a uh, rule structure about how projects are uh, prioritized across different municipalities and state governments. So the agent based model has, at this point, dummy federal agent, uh, but essentially it captures the dynamics of the state agent and uh, regional planning commission agents and town agents, and projects are also modeled as agents, and they have a very complex interlocking set of behaviors that drive the internal endogenous dynamics of the model. Uh, but essentially, it captures the existing institutional rule structure that is being uh, implemented by the state of Vermont. And uh, the model could also be used to, like, there is a baseline scenario that the model is calibrated to, but it can also capture, like, say, if we give more power to the regional government or uh, enhance more power just to the state government, or the scenario number four is, like, more cost effective. Uh, scenarios like projects that are more cost effective get prioritized, or there are, like, federal. Uh, other kinds of like, uh, we just eliminate the state government and federal government just gives the money to the local towns. That's scenario number five, or there's also funding flux, or also we have uh, sequestration scenarios, like when the government funding comes down uh, because of the sequestration effects, what happens in terms of which towns get uh, funding. In, uh, uh, so the model can essentially run enormous amount of scenarios, and we are pitching this model as a decision support system where the, the policy makers and decision makers, they can run this model to see that if they want to change the institution, institutional route from one to another, what would be the outcome? So these are, for example, some of the scenarios that I'm just going to quickly go through. Uh, it kind of projects the, the allocation of funding across different towns for, uh, in this particular paper, it's about 25 years, but we have an, uh, another paper. It can be also simulation horizon can be extended to 50 years. But then you can see that some of the impacts of uh, differences between uh, the baseline scenario versus uh, regionalization scenario is that there are emergent patterns in terms of more equitable allocation of funding happens when we uh, shift the decision making power from the state government to the local government, to the regional governments. Um, similarly, if we have just no state government in the middle, uh, then the basis of attraction become a lot more like the funding gets just distributed to fewer towns and not every town gets funding. Uh, so there are different kinds of scenarios. The model can also predict those at the local town level. Uh, so we can we haven't put them down on the GIS map, but we can add put that on the GIS map and predict the funding for each local town as well. Thank you. Thank you.